Hello and welcome. Let's take a look at the Orion Short Tube 80, one of the most popular beginner telescopes on the market. Hello and welcome. You know, I've done a lot of reviews and people write me and they say, you've done a lot of equipment reviews on exotic and expensive equipment. Could you do something for beginners? And I thought, well, maybe I should do that. So here we are. This is a beginner's video. If you're an old hand at this, just, you know, have me on in the background or something. If you're new to astronomy and you're just looking to get your feet wet and don't know where to start, you've come to the right place. In fact, I'm glad I've intercepted you if you just happen to run across this video, because most people who get started in astronomy do the wrong thing. When they go to buy a telescope, they go to a department store. And people like me have been railing against this for a very long time, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and still it seems most people do the wrong thing. They go to a department store. It, this is still the number one question I get both online and in person. Ed, I bought a telescope at a department store and it doesn't work. So we're here to try to hedge you off on this because for not much more money or sometimes even the same amount of money you would have spent doing that, you can get yourself a real telescope that will actually show you something. Now, when you ask, take a poll of amateur astronomers and ask them to list what are the most common good beginner telescopes that don't break the bank and aren't so big that you need a huge car to transport them around in. And if you take that poll, you're going to hear the same four, five, six models listed over and over again. And this is usually one of them. This is the Orion Short Tube 80. It's an 80 millimeter refractor, and it's sold by Orion Telescope and Binoculars over in California. You can look them up on the web. I don't have any affiliation with these people. I'm a customer just like you. So what we have here is a very basic refractor. It's got an 80 millimeter lens in the front, and the lens focuses the image off to the eyepiece in the back, and you turn this knob to focus the eyepiece. The refractor is the simplest, most direct, and most traditional kind of telescope. Light enters in the front, and you look into the back. Now there's another kind of telescope called the Newtonian reflector, and it's actually the opposite of this one. In a reflector, the mirror sits in the back, and the eyepiece is actually in the side of the front of the telescope. So the two types are the opposite of one another. The traditional refractor, you look into the back. The reflector, you look into the side of the front. So as if astronomy wasn't confusing enough, a lot of times when people walk up to a telescope, they don't even know which end of it to look into. And uh, so when I do a lot of these talks for kids, and I always try to stress because after I, you know, lecture during the daytime, I'll often bring my astronomy club back to school at night. And we'll have different types of telescopes, and I'll try to drill it into them. Always have clear in your head what kind of telescope you're looking through before you look through it. Is it the kind you look through the back or the kind you look through the front? And, of course, there's always one kid in every class who messes that up. Now, this model has been around for a very long time. I think I first saw the initial version of this one in the Orion catalog somewhere in the mid-1990s, and it's September 2020 now, and it's still in the catalog. So by my calculation, that means Orion has sold approximately a bazillion of these things, and actually several of them have passed through my hands as well. All of the versions are recommended. There are some minor cosmetic differences and accessories that are sold with them. Um, but because there are so many of them out there, you might want to look at a used one. You see them all the time popping up on Craigslist and eBay, and even Amazon has a used section that I've seen some of these in. One thing you want to be aware of is that you make sure you get all of the original accessories with it. Many times be aware you are dealing with a seller who is a beginner themselves and may not know what comes with it, what's supposed to come with it, and what all the stuff does. In that case, see if you can get a picture from the seller. Ask them to take a picture of what they have. The reason I point this out is when you get something and it's missing a piece or two, the parts can be a pain to track down. Now again, as I've stated before, there have been several versions of this Orion Short Tube 80. 
I would guess 90 to 95% of them look like this one. They're painted white and they come with accessories similar to this one. Some of them have been painted different colors. They're all okay, but there is one thing that I do want to draw your attention to. The very early versions came with an inch and a quarter mounting block at the bottom of the telescope and you could, you know, screw it into a photo, photo tripod or something like that. Starting around the mid-2000s, they changed to this ring and plate assembly, which is a bit more standard in the telescope world. And you can also use it the way you use the other block because this has an inch and a quarter uh, mounting block underneath it as well. I would strongly recommend that you get one of the ones that has this ring and plate assembly. If you have a choice between the two, get this one. Those early plates at the bottom of the telescopes were fragile. They had a tendency to break and you'd wind up getting the rings in the plate anyway. So you might as well just start off getting the correct accessories. Now when you get started, some people ask me, Ed, do you really need all of this stuff that's on the telescope? And yeah, you kind of do. Uh, for example, this is the diagonal. And what the diagonal does is it puts the eyepiece in a comfortable position for you to look through. Now, there's no reason why you can't take the eyepiece out and just put it in the holder like this, but you have to keep in mind a couple of things. Well, first of all, uh, the amount of focus travel that's in this thing has been specifically calculated with this thing in mind, because if you think about it, this diagonal does consume some light travel, and so it is actually needed in there. Now, if you wanted to do this, you could buy an extension tube and look straight through, and in fact, in Japan, that's actually quite common. There are purists over there. Um, the reason you might not want to do that is because if you think about it, you're, you're going to be straining your neck in certain places. If this thing's pointed straight up, the eyepiece is going to be pointed straight down, and you're going to be hurting your neck looking through it. Something to watch out for. Another thing, you can flash your street credibility towards an astronomer, even if you know nothing, by referring to this as an eyepiece instead of a lens. So there's a little trick for you. The second question you sometimes get is, do we need this little doohickey here? Well, this is a finder, and there are several different kinds of these. The most common kind up until recently was actually another small telescope mounted on top of the big telescope. And this, the small telescope has very low magnification, and it has a wide field of view, so if you're looking for something, you can get yourself in the general area of the sky and then fine-tune it in the big telescope. Now, this thing doesn't have very much power. It only has a 400 millimeter focal length, and so some people say, well, it's its own finder. Technically, yeah, that's true. I have had mixed results doing that. You're actually better off, I think, with a finder of some sort to get you in the general vicinity. Now, this thing may look a little funny. It's obviously not a small telescope of its own. This is what they call a one power red dot finder. And what it does is it projects a red dot at infinity. You leave both eyes open. And if you have a star chart or if you're looking at the moon or Saturn or Jupiter, you just put the red dot on whatever you're looking at and the telescope will be there. You'll find some debate as to which one is better. I don't think one is better than the other. It's a matter of personal preference. Now here's another tip to get you going. Sometimes the telescope will come with more than one eyepiece. One is a low power eyepiece and one is a higher power eyepiece. I think the inclination with most beginners is to put the higher power eyepiece in the telescope first, and that would be a mistake. Use the low power eyepiece, and this will become more obvious to you as you use your telescope, but as you increase the power, you tend to increase all of the other bad things as well. The atmosphere, um, if it's bad, the shakiness in your mount, and um, things will get bigger, but they will also get a little bit fuzzier. And what you'll find is a lot of the objects you're going to be looking at up in the night sky are quite large. You don't need a lot of power to see a lot of these objects. So stick with the low power eyepiece for most of your observing. I would say for me, I mean, every observer is different. I'm at low power, one of the lowest possible powers in any particular telescope, probably 80 to 85% of the time. OK, so what are you going to put this on? You're not going to hand hold this thing. Your hands are not steady enough. You are going to need a mount of some kind. Now, we'll show you some of these mounts shortly, but you need to be aware that a good mount can cost as much or sometimes more than the telescope itself, 
And the more you get into this, the more you realize it's almost impossible to have too much mount. The heavier the mount, the better. And most beginners are unaware of just how steady the mount has to be in order to get good views out of your telescope. Now the fortunate thing about this Short Tube 80 is it's one of the few, one of the very few models out there that will technically be able to be used on a standard photographic tripod. Now the bigger the better, but if you can't afford a telescope specific mount, a photo tripod will do, it'll get you going, and it'll get you started, and you can decide later if you want to buy a specific telescope mount for yourself. And there you have it, the end of part one of this video. If this has been a lot of information for you, don't worry, I was there once myself. It's okay. Take your time, the cosmos will still be there tomorrow. In part two of this video, we're going to put this telescope on various mounts and help you decide which one is right for you. Until then, I'll see you soon.